Children's Church. You may be seated. Glory to God. If you have your Bibles this evening, of which I trust you do for this Meat Eaters Bible study, I ask that you would turn to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, please. We've got some ground to cover today, so I hope you're not sleepy. We've been up since about 4 o'clock this morning, so we got a lot done today. Glory to God. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 1 says this, But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, he's writing to brethren, he said, concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. So God's saying, listen, you've got to come to a point in your life where you've got eyes to see and ears to hear that when understand some things are going to happen. There ain't no, no, no more reason to write things unto you. People just been learning and 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 learning. The Bible says in the last days there will be a people that are ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Listen, that's a type of the church today. Amen. These people were ever learning but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You're supposed to oppose them. You're supposed to stand against them. You're not supposed to cuddle up with them. Hey, listen, folks, I'm telling you, if you don't know I'm serious about this, I'm going to tell you, I'm serious about this. Amen. This, to me, is not a game. This is eternal life. <clears throat> I don't care if I hurt your feelings or not. Amen. I'm here to tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help us God. Amen. And that's what you should want to know. Amen. You should want to know the truth. You should want to receive correction. You should want to grow in God. Amen. You should be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. yeah. For you yourselves, where was that? You have no heat that I should write, no need that I should write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly, perfectly, that the day of the Lord, no, we're talking about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. So comes as a thief in the night. Now listen, he's talking about a thief in the night. Now you know today people say, well no man knows the day or the hour. Yeah. Then they all just go to sleep and they live the way they want to live and they do the way they want to do now in churches. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about in the world. Because the Bible said if we, had to, if we had to separate ourselves from everybody in the world, we'd have to come out of the world, we wouldn't have nowhere to exist. <laughs> I'm talking about in the church. He says that you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord. I'm telling you, the church today needs to know something. They need to know about the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord. It, it's the same day. You can't have 15 different comings to make yourself feel good. <laughs> there can only be one second coming. <laughs> there can only be one last trumpet. <laughs> How many trumpets do you think you can blow and say, well, that's the last trumpet. No, no. Here's the, the last trumpet is in the beginning. Then the last trumpet's in the middle. Then the last trumpet's in the end. Then his second coming is at the beginning. His second coming is at the end. No, no, he's coming here. No, he's coming there. Listen, there's only one coming. <laughs> Amen. We need to grow up. Mm -hmm. For when they say, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. Now we've studied this verse alone in itself. The pregnancy of a woman is those pains are so far apart 
But the closer she gets to be giving birth, the more severe the pain is, and it's more frequent. <laughs> I just saw a graph the other day. It was in the early 70s or something. Earthquakes over at 8 or 9 on the Richter scale was about 7,000. In, in a year. Then it got up to like 2,000 and something. 2,008 or 9. And that, that figure jumped to like 80,000. Think about that. From 7,000 in a year to 80,000 in a year. This year, already in 6 months, we had 89,000. I think some things are happening. <laughs> For those that have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit has to say, it's time to be looking and listening. Not cuddling up with the world. <laughs> and they shall not escape. You see that? They shall not escape. So there's some people that the day of the Lord is going to come on like a thief in the night. And there's a people that says, and they shall not escape. Now listen, you're rather in or out. That's what I love about the faith. You're rather in or out. And hey, I'm helping you make the decision if you need the decision to be made. I mean, I had to throw someone out of my office this week. I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff you need, to be, need for real leadership to be saying. Amen. Hey, everybody today is the greatest prophet, the greatest apostle. Everybody's a self-proclaimed this, a self-proclaimed that. Everybody's this, everybody that. The Bible tells you you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Amen. Mm -hmm. Listen, you need to look and see what was really happening in the book of Acts and then see who's bearing that kind of fruit. So how many churches have you helped outside your church? How many churches? How many churches have you built? How many churches have you helped build? How many people have you helped that way? Just, just a thought for some leadership qualifications. We're not going to get into talking about, you know, speaking things over people and then they drop dead in your congregation because they lie to you. Hello? Mm -hmm. That don't make us feel fluffy and get goose pimples and it don't make us feel real nice. But I guarantee you one thing, it'll put the fear of God in your life. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I did. I threw somebody out this week. We've been throwing a couple out lately. You got to clean them out somehow. I think the easiest way is just to throw them out. That saves all the backbite and all the gossip and all the lies about this and that and blah, 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 blah. Look, just shut up. If you're not happy here, hit the road. The door swings both ways. The same way you come in and close it, leave when you leave. Mm -hmm. That's not hard to get. No, I mean, we're not hard to get along with. <laughs> I'm happy. The joy of the Lord is my strength, if you can't Amen. tell. Man didn't give me my joy, and man will never take it away. I get my peace, love, and joy from the Holy Ghost, and not anybody or any person that ever walked on the face of this earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> and they shall not escape, but, I love the but, because the but means everything that was said before that doesn't apply to you. Like someone says, Oh, I just think you're a great person and we just love you. But, as soon as you hear that but, forget everything that they said about you before that. Because then they're getting ready to drop a hammer on you. <laughs> but, you brethren, hello, listen to this. This is, this is the church you want to be in. But you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. But wait, if you talk to most people in churches today across the country, they well, I don't know about that blood moon stuff. <laughs> I don't know about this, and I don't know about that. No, you don't know about anything besides just getting all you can get and getting all you can and just living in your flesh. <laughs> when you confront anybody about getting out of their flesh, you see how uncomfortable they really get. 
Because that's all they think. That's all they act. That's all they have is their flesh. Jesus said, many will come in my, my name in the last days saying they're the Christ and they're going to deceive many. People want you to follow them, not follow Jesus. Amen. I want you to follow Jesus. I want to point you in the right direction. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and, and sons of the day, and we are not of the night or of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, let us not sleep as others sleep, but let us Watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Sounds like he read Ephesians 6. <laughs> For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we're awake or asleep, we shall live together with him. Now right before this, he talked about an event. I mean, I just might as well get on this since I'm a little fired up tonight. <laughs> he said, he talked about this event in 4, 6, 1 Thessalonians 4.16 that got so many people messed up. I mean, they're just, they're all twisted. But don't let me, don't get mad at me, just bear with me so I can try to teach you something. He said, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15, he said, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Say the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Now, now listen, you need to understand the coming of the Lord means the coming of the Lord. <laughs> there can only be so many comings of the Lord. Will by no means proceed those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, he's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. There's the last trumpet talked about in 1 Corinthians 15. There can only be one last trumpet. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain to be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be together with the Lord. So therefore comfort one another with these words. Talking about the coming of the Lord. Then he says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, we have no need to write unto you. So now go over to verse 17. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you are doing. Verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unworldly. Comfort the faint-hearted. Uphold the weak and be patient to all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Verse 22, abstain from every form of evil. That means to get away from it. Don't be sleeping with it. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body. See, that's where I've been preaching that for about 12 years. You're a spiritual man or woman who lives in a body and you have a soul which is your mind, emotions, and your will. What we try to do in this ministry is to train you and teach you to be a mature man or woman in Christ. You've got to learn how to control your flesh bag. Your flesh bag is most of your problems because you get offended. <laughs> Your little flesh gets mad and you throw a little temper tantrums. <laughs> he ate my hot dog. Did you see them take that dessert? They took two desserts. Well, you don't need two anyway. <laughs> Give it to somebody else. Hallelujah. Spirit, soul, and body that you would be preserved blameless until when? The coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord. That's what we're talking about. So now if you go over to 2 Thessalonians 2, he wrote a letter to clarify the issue. He said, hey, I got to clarify something to you. I don't want you to be uninformed, brethren. There's no need to be writing about this still. Hey, we're writing about it 2,000 years later. Mm -hmm. People don't know who they're worshiping. Oh, we all worship the 
same God. No, you don't, because my Bible tells me the only way to get to God is through Jesus. You can't worship some rock or some tree or some shrub or some animal or some pig or some goat and think you're getting access to God when God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And that son said, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Amen. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes unto the Father but by that's how we get access to God. Listen. Wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leadeth into destruction. And many there are that will go thereby. Narrow is the gate. Straight is the way that leadeth into eternal life. And very few there will be to find it. I don't want you to be in a group of many. I'm trying to teach you to come out from among them. Get some character. Get some fiber. Be bold as a lion. Stop being a wimp for crying out loud. Amen. Get some backbone to you. 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord. We're talking about the coming of the Lord. If you ain't figured that out yet. <laughs> we're talking about the coming of the Lord today. Concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and because people try to separate these two things. There can only be one coming of the Lord and there can only be one gathering together unto him. Amen. So he said, now brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him, there can only be one caught up. Mm -hmm. We ask you, please hear this. Not to be soon shaken in your mind or trouble, either by a spirit, I don't care if they say it's the Holy Ghost. He's saying, I want to be clear to you about something. I don't care if they come to you and thus say to the Lord to pour oil on your head, lay hands on you. I don't care if you're on the floor laying around or running around the church. The Word of God has preeminence over all your feelings. Listen, there were some people that drank some Kool-Aid one day and thought that they were correct. <laughs> Amen. And listen, they really thought they were correct because they, they thought they were right because they drank the Kool-Aid. That's serious. Either by a spirit or by a word because everybody wants to give you a word. Oh, God told me this and oh, God told me that. Oh, I feel this and God said that. And you know it's contrary to the word when you really know the word. Because who is the Word? Jesus is the Word. Amen. Thank you. Or by a letter. Even if a letter's wrote. Even if they try to get it out of another book. I don't care who gets the latest revelation. Everybody's writing books now on this. Some books now on that. We got 500 books on the blood moon. Amen. <laughs> As if from us as though the day of Christ. We're talking about the coming of the Lord. Or being caught up to Him. Or being... Gathered up to him. I don't want to say our work because it'll get everybody in a tizzy. But I think by now you catch my drift. <laughs> As though the day of Christ has come. Let no one deceive you. Hey, Jesus said many will be deceived in the last days. He said don't let anybody deceive you by any means at all. For that day. What day? The coming of the Lord. The day of Christ. Are gathering together up to him. The big R word, the great escape, whatever you want to call it. He said, let no one deceive you by any means that that day will not come. That day is not going to happen unless the falling away comes first. Jesus ain't coming back until there's a great falling away. Now, hey, I believed a certain way for about 25 years. I had taught it from when I was little. But there's holes in it. All through it, there's holes in it. I used to think, well, what, what about this? What about that? But, oh, that doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean this. That doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean this. Well, yes, it does. Because when it does, it all fits together. Amen. And you can't base your whole everything you believe off of thinking, well, God wouldn't let me suffer. <laughs> 
I said, well, listen, well, there's a whole bunch of folks that's going to be standing up here at the altar, and they're going to be in robes of white, and they're going to be saying glory to God forever, and they're going to be the ones that have been beheaded during the tribulation. Amen. <clears throat> now, we used to preach about being beheaded in the late 70s, and people used to say, oh, that's a medieval thing. That doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, there's been some people losing their heads lately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Search it. Get online. For one time, I'm telling you to social media yourself and to get on there and find out what's happening. You need to know what's happening in regards to that. They're crucifying Christians today. By the hundreds, by the thousands, they're nailing them up like Christ. They're taking little Christian girls and cutting their heads off and sticking their heads on tables like pumpkins. By the hundreds and by the thousands. And no, our president puts a gag order on it so the press can't leak it out. So we wouldn't know the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us God. Get online and look at it. Google it. Find out what happens. What's happening. I'm not telling you now that something's going to happen in 20 years. I'm telling you it's happening in your backyard today. Mm -hmm. let no one deceive you by any means that that day will not come unless the falling away comes first I am going to go I've been going on record saying this and I want you to know something clearly if that rapture does not take place when a lot of the church thinks it's going to take place before anything happens you will absolutely see the greatest falling away in the history of the church because you can't keep people in the church today when now things are nice and cozy. <laughs> if they begin to sin, they think God has betrayed them and they've been taught their whole life, oh, God wouldn't let you suffer, honey. <laughs> well, no, there's going to be some people around here that's going through that. You may not think it's you, but God, somebody's going to be going through it. Amen. There are going to be believers going through it. Amen. Man, thank God we're around a little bit and we're beginning to see a little bit about it. I'd love to go down in the Hall of Faith as one of those. Amen. I would. I'd guard myself up. I'm just, I'm ready. Let's go to battle. See, I'm out of that flesh and that stinking thinking. I want to be kingdom minded. Amen. I know there's going to be some surrounding the throne of God. They've been given white robes and, and John, the beloved, said, hey, who is that group? He was great. John was great. But he wanted to know, hey, who were those guys? <laughs> that was the elite of the elite. He said, those are the people that was beheaded in the tribulation. Amen. And there's some beheadings going on. Listen, hundreds of little beautiful girls in white little dresses just whacking their heads off and sticking them on tables like pumpkins. Do a little research. Wake up. Take some Maylocks before you look at it. Or Pepto-Bismol or something, whatever that stuff is. <laughs> he said, this day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of son is revealed, the son of perdition who exposes himself above all that is called God or all that is worshipped that sits as God in the temple of God showing himself as God. Now, anybody that knows anything about last time pro end time prophecies, you know that that is going to happen at the three and a half year period. Daniel said there will be a time, times, and a half time. Times, time is a year, times is two years, and a half time is a half year. So that's three and a half years. That's when the man of sin is going to set himself up in the temple. So if he's saying the day of Christ or the coming of the Lord and our gathering together unto him cannot happen until that event happens, then we know we're here to at least mid-tribulation. And if, if not, you've got to take out 1 Thessalonians 2, 1, 2, and 3. You've got to cut it out of your Bible. Because there is no way after God says that, Listen, not to be shaken by mind or trouble, either by a spirit, 
by any word or by as a letter as from us that the day of Christ has already come. Because it cannot happen, it will not happen, unless these two things take place first. That's a little landmark for you as far as end time last days stuff goes. But listen, we don't want to be in, we don't want to be in that part of the great falling away. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hey, I preached about this. I taught about this. I said, hey, if you if they come out with the mark of the beast, where there's going to be a mark of the beast, they already have an RFID chip. They're putting it in our babies right now as soon as the child's born. Boom. It goes right into them. There's adults taking the RFID chip. It tells you when you were born, what you eat, what you bought, what you like, where you go. They get everything you've ever done mapped out because of your Facebook account. Because we know how everybody loves their Facebook. I got up, I ate breakfast this morning, I went to the bathroom, I took a shower, I talked to the dog, I walked the dog, I talked to the cat. Blah, blah. I'm not on it, so I don't know. I've never been on Facebook in my life. <clears throat> I'm not one of these people that say I'm not on Facebook, but I'm always on Facebook. That's one how I know people got a problem because everybody says this. Oh, I got Facebook, but I'm never on it. And then when you talk to them, that's all they talk about, that they're always on Facebook. Well, I got this friend. I got 10,000 million friends. <laughs> I guess it makes you feel good. I don't know. Hallelujah. I was going somewhere. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. We're talking about some signs and some things that are going on. We don't want you to be left out. We want you to know something. I'm not worried about you being left behind. I'm worried about giving you enough strength to go through something. Amen. Amen. How do you like that for a word? Amen. <laughs> we'll bear up our arms. We'll buckle down. We'll be men and women of faith. Amen. We'll fight the fight. Hey, we'll endure to the end. Those that endure to the end shall be saved. Thank you, Jesus, for slowing the clock down. <laughs> Acts 2, verse 17. And it shall become, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters, they're going to prophesy. We're seeing that. Your young men shall see visions. We're seeing that. Your old men shall dream dreams. We're seeing that. On my men servants and even on my maid servants, the men and women both. I'm going to pour out my spirit in those last days, and they all shall prophesy. And I'm going to show wonders in the heaven above. God said, I'm going to place signs in the heavens above in the last days. Now you need to hold your finger there and just go back to Genesis 1:14. Look, I'll show you something real quick. Genesis, the first book in your Bible. If you got the same Bible as me, it's Genesis 1.14. <laughs> hey, listen. Genesis 1.14. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for something. Signs and seasons and for days and for years. This is how God set up the calendar. We're following a pagan calendar. We can't even figure out when the holy days are. It'll give you a headache if you try to figure out. Because we're not on the same calendar. We're not on the holy calendar. Constantine came in and changed everything. Messed everything up. So you can't even figure it out when you want to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But God said something. I'm going to do something in the last days. I'm going to show you signs in the heaven. What are the signs? Well, this morning, October 8, 2014, we woke up about 4 o'clock in the morning. We went outside our church and we saw a big blood moon. Amen. So it says here, he says, and I'll show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Well, here are the signs in the earth beneath. He said, there's going to be blood. There may be some bloodshed. <laughs> now, I know people don't like that, but there's going to be some bloodshed. And there's going to be fire and a vapor of smoke. Now, a lot of the 
end time prophets now are saying that could be this big volcano that's supposed to erupt. Over there at Yosemite Park or wherever. But they said if that volcano erupts, Pennsylvania will be covered with the ash and lava. That's how bad it can be. If it erupts, it's over. Everything from here to there is just going to be destroyed. The volcano, if that thing erupts, and there's so many of them that if any of them erupts, it can just shut down the United States. See, we think we're bulletproof right now. Amen. But people don't even know about the blood moves. They're just going through their life. They get up in the morning, they go to work. They come home, they go to bed. They get back up, they go to work. They're just like a rat on a treadmill. <laughs> they don't know anything about the things of the kingdom. This is going to happen on the earth. There's going to be blood, fire, and vapors of smoke. Pillars of smoke, it says. Just think when you see them big volcanoes when they erupt, what it looks like. It's fire and a big pillar of smoke. Then in the heavens, then it says, the sun shall be turned into darkness. This is happening right now. And the moon shall be turned into blood. That's where they get the term blood moon. Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. It's the same day we're talking about. He said, there's no need that I write unto you again and again and again and again coming to work. Because these signs, you're going to know the signs. You're not going to be some ignorant people that don't know when Jesus is coming back. <laughs> Somebody remember that I was there because I'll probably forget. I'm going to show you something else. Watch. <clears throat> I did that. Watch. Daniel 12. Daniel 12, verse 9, says this. Go your way, Daniel, for the words are they're closed. They're sealed up. That's why people can't figure out the book of Revelation. Because the words have been sealed up. The book has been a closed book. Well, I've been, re I've been reading that Revelation book. I just can't re understand anything. I just don't know what anything means in the Bible. He said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up. They're sealed until the time of the end. The time of the end, something's going to happen. Many shall be purified. There's going to be some people to come clean. Made white. Ooh, robes of righteousness. And refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But... The wise shall understand. The wise are going to know it. Hey, you're not of the darkness. You're children of light. That day shouldn't overtake you as a thief in the night. Amen. You're supposed to know something. But no, if they put it in your brain your whole life since you're a little kid, oh, we're not going to be around for any of that. You don't have to prepare. You don't have to be ready. Oh, God's a good God. He wouldn't let you suffer. Don't think anything. Don't think that would ever happen. That's a lie. That's a lie. Amen. Hey, God sent his son to this earth. You think he came in a Mercedes? <laughs> you think he died of old age? Nope. Just think about that for a little bit. He said, we're talking about these things called blood moons. There's only been seven tetrads. The tetrad is four in a year cycle. And not just four in a year cycle, it means the four fall on the Jewish feast days, meaning Passover and Tabernacles. Passover and Tabernacles. It's about a year period there that you get four blood moons within a one year period and they all fall on the Jewish feast days. There's only been two of these in the history of the world that they've had a solar eclipse in the middle of them. One was the first year when Christ was on the face of this earth and he was crucified. God blocked out the sun that day. This one, seven, the seventh year this year, the seventh set of them were over. Now this set here is number eight. The number eight is a number of new beginnings. So everybody's waiting to see what God is going to do. 
Now, we're in a Shemitah year. The Shemitah year means that this is a year of, of everybody just, over the, all the Jews just cease their working and they trust God for everything. Coming out of that year is the year of Jubilee, where God's going to bless everybody that's honored Him and worshipped Him, or He's going to curse the heathen nations. So we need to see what God is going to do in September of 2015. So this Shemitah year is going to fall until September 2015. It started September 2015, 14, it's already started, and it's going to go to September of 2015. When that ends, on that same month is when we're going to have a blood moon. And this is the only time in the history of the world, except when Jesus was on the face of the earth, that there's been a solar eclipse right in the middle of the four blood moons. It's like God is screaming from heaven saying, get yourself ready! Amen. No, we just want to cuddle up with the devil. <laughs> Joel 2. Joel 2. Listen to what Joel said. We're going to Joel 2. Hallelujah. Turn back in your Bibles to Joel 2. Come on, Joel. Where'd you go? Joel 2. Joel's always hard for me. Joel 2. It's just that little book that's hid. It's just hid right in here. Thank you, Jesus. Joel 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's happening. Your old men shall dream dreams. That's happening. Your young men shall see visions. That's happening. On my men servants and maid servants, I'm going to pour out my spirit in those days. That's what's happening. And I'm going to show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness. That's one thing. And the moon shall be turned into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Those are, those are some landmarks of things that must take place before Jesus comes back. So listen, if we've, done, if we've, if we've studied all the blood moons and we know there's only been seven that have happened in a year cycle on the feast days, and we know that NASA has looked in the future and they said in the next 1,000 years, that is never going to happen again. Now they are definitely wrong or you better get your house in order. Because these are just two more check marks off God's book. Because he's going to say, okay, remember the blood moons? And remember right in the middle of that same year I brought the sun out a total solar Eclipse? I haven't even told you this. Next year is going to be two of them. A total solar eclipse and then a partial. Two next year. During the blood moons. Now let's go back over to the New Testament. Matthew 24, 29. Matthew 24, one of, one of my most favorite chapters in the Bible. Matthew 24, talking about the last days, the end times. He said, talking about these last days. He said, Matthew 24, verse 23, Then if they say to you, look, there is the Christ, or there, don't believe it, for there will be false Christ and false prophets. They will rise and they will even show great signs and wonders to deceive, even if possible, the very elect. Hey, listen, me and Steve was talking this morning and he said something that stuck with me. It was like a word from the Lord. He said, hey, you know what gets me? We know this. In, in 1492, there was four blood moons. That was the Spanish Inquisition. That's when all the heathen wanted to kill all the Jews. That, that was the uh, four blood moon year. Then we know in 1948, Israel became a nation again, the first time in the history of the world. That was four blood moons. We know that happened. Then we know in 68, in the, in the Six-Day War, it happened then, too. But so Steve said to me, hey, how come we were never taught all this stuff about the blood moons? Think about that. A lot of you were alive during that time, or born right after that time. And I'll guarantee you this, you weren't taught the blood moons like you're being taught right now. You just knew off there was a solar eclipse you hit under a desk or something. <laughs> oh, there's a blood moon you 
were sleeping. You didn't even know what it was. You didn't even care. Thought the wolves were out howling at the moon or something. No revelation behind it whatsoever. Now, if you turn on the television or you listen to any major prophet now, that's all they're talking about. Why? Because this is the season. Amen. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the season. They were happening, but people didn't know it. It was not revealed to them. So they were in darkness. Even though they heard of it, even though they knew it, they never put the pieces and the puzzle together. A mystery is a hidden truth that can only be seen by a divine revelation. A mystery is a hidden truth that can only be seen by a divine revelation. That's the only way you're going to see it, is by a divine revelation. That's why they didn't see it. Doesn't mean we're any better than them, but I'm telling you, we're seeing it now. The church is knowing about a blood moon. Therefore, if they say to you, look, there's he, he is out in the desert, go out there for it, or look, he's in the inner rooms, go in there. Don't believe him. For his lightning comes from the east. Now, hey, here it is again. We're talking about the day of the Lord. We're talking about the coming of the Lord. We're talking about the same day, the same event. <clears throat> For his lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. We're talking about the coming of the Son of Man. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. And immediately after those dark days in the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Stars will even fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then, then, after that, then, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet. And they will gather together his elect. We're talking about being gathered up. The great caught up. The great rapture. Whatever you want to call it. Then they will gather his elect from the four winds of one end of heaven to the other. Just some food for thought. Mark 13, 24. Mark 13, 24. You're doing some running tonight if you don't know that. Amen. Mark 13, 24. Go to 21. Look, if he says, hey, then if anyone says, you look, there's the Christ, or look, there he is over there, don't believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will arise, and they're going to show signs and wonders to deceive, if even possible, the elect. Hey, if you're talking about deceiving the elect, some elect's got to be around here. <laughs> Amen. Hello? If all the elect's gone, then what elect are they talking about that's deceiving? They're just talking about the elect that don't want to be there because they don't think they can endure through anything. <laughs> but take heed. See, I have told you all things beforehand. But in those days, hey, in those days, something's going to happen. The elect's still going to be around. After that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Woo! The stars of the heaven will fall and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son, the son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he's going to send his angels to gather his elect from the four winds from one part of the earth to the other farthest part of heaven. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're learning something. You're stretching your wineskin today. Luke 21, 25. You're stretching your wineskin today. You're being stretched a little. I hope you got a little Holy Ghost on you today. You're not some dried up old piece of leather that's going to crack every time someone tries to give you a little increase in wisdom or knowledge. You get all, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm taking my toys and running home. <laughs> Verse 20, Luke 21, 20. But when you see Jerusalem, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. 
Listen, ISIS is moving in on that little country right there beside Turkey. Amen. Does anybody know the name of it? Syria. Might be Syria. If Turkey doesn't look like they're going to help them, and Turkey's one of our allies, you need to listen to this. If Turkey doesn't take them, and if it is Syria, and, and ISIS goes in there, you're going to see the greatest bloodbath that you've ever seen in your life. Because it's already happening now. They're crucifying Christians left and right. They're cutting people's heads off left and right. You need to, go, you need to get on your social media, what you're so good at, and get on there and learn the truth. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to see a major bloodbath. They are going to set them as an example. Then let those in Judea flee to the mountains. Let them who are in the midst of her depart. Let not those who are coming uh, are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things that are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those that are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land, and wrath upon the people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword. In the 70s, we preached this. Nobody thought anybody would be beheaded. And they will fall by the edge of the sword, and they will be captive in all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles. When? Until the time of Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun, and the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress. Nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expect, expectation of the things which are going to come upon the earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory. Verse 31, So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, this generation, this generation, this generation, this generation will by no means pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousingness, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and that that day will come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore, watch, pray always, that you may be counted worthy to escape the things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Listen, some things are happening. Revelation 6.12. Revelation 6.12. I could, I could do this for a long time. Revelation 6.12. Did I say Revelation 6.12? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, just making sure you're awake. Revelation 6.12. And I looked and he opened the sixth seal. We're talking about the sixth seal. Well, let me just back up here just a little bit so I can, I can tell you something. Verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. Ooh. I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God, those that were beheaded, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then white robes was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest just a little while longer until both the number of those fellow servants and their brethren who were killed as they were, were completed. And then I looked, and when he opened the sixth seal and beheld, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth, and the moon became like blood. I think we're beginning to see some of these things. We could, we could teach a two-hour sermon on every single one of them scriptures, chapters I just gave you. Amen. But yet people get up and they, 
they sleep through the blood moon or whatever, or they look at it and they go, uh, that wasn't as good as the movie. <laughs> because our hearts have become seared as though with a branding iron. <laughs> We compare what God does by showing us a sign in the heavens to what you may see on your surround sound. <laughs> and God is not talking to your flesh bag. God is talking to your spirit. Mm -hmm. So when you hear truth and God is trying to get truth into the earth in the last days, there will be a remnant that understand it. Daniel was the one who received the dreams and the visions and he couldn't even interpret it. And the angel told him, Daniel, it's not for you to know. Just relax. He said, you're going to go to sleep for a while. But in the last days, there's going to be these people when knowledge increases. That they're going to be able to know these things because, hey, just like he said over there in 1 Thessalonians 5, he said, you're not of darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. It's time for us to open up our eyes and our ears and let the Spirit say something to the church. Amen. Amen. I'm not foolish enough just to not believe anything just because I don't feel in my flesh that God would not let anything happen to anybody when we know the whole tribulation is about tribulation on the earth. That was the craziest thing I ever heard. Well, God, he wouldn't let anybody he loves suffer. Well, no. Who's the thousands of the people that are going to be on the earth? Who's the number? Who's the number? They said that that number, you couldn't count the number. Where did that part go? That part was in my Bible. That part was in my Bible. I'm telling you. Let me find it. <laughs> Say it's in your Bible. It's in the Bible. Yep, it's in the Bible. Look it up in your concordance. Somebody help me. <laughs> they, he said, you couldn't even number. Okay, you're too slow. What? <laughs> Revelation 7 verse 9 says this. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude. A great multitude. This is, say a great multitude. A great multitude. Which no one could number. These are so many people that nobody can even number. Of all nations, all nations, all tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were clothed with red robes and they had palm branches in their hands. And they were crying out, man, I love to be in this group. Don't tell me, oh God would never let you go to anything in the tribulation. No, I'm not sure. I said, I'd love to be in the group. <laughs> I'd love to be counted worthy to be in that group of people. Amen. To go out as a soldier, to go out as somebody that died for Christ. Amen. But no, people get this programmed in their head. Oh, God loves you. He wouldn't do that to you. Then when the time takes place, they're so deceived that it warps their mind. And then, oh, well, if you don't receive the mark, well, then your children are going to die. Then you can't get your medicines. Everybody's addicted to their medicines. And then you can't get this and you can't get that. And you can't suffer and you've never suffered. And God wouldn't let you suffer, so why suffer? So just get the mark of the beast to be happy. Go to hell with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures, they fell to their faces before the throne and they worshiped God saying, Amen, blessing and glory and, and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. There's a great worship song. You think they have to just crank it up and ramp it up and just get your flesh all whipped up and run around and try to impress you with the worship? That's what they're going to be saying for thousands of years around the throne. Then one of the elders answered and said to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? Who are these people? And where did they come from? There's so many, we can't even number them. Oh, they could have been the church that was pulled out of here before anything happened. <clears throat> 
And I said to him, sir, you know something. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. And they washed their robes and they made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are the ones before the throne of God. They are the ones that serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall never hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. And the sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who sits in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them into living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. See, that's the group I want to be in. Amen. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's my blessed hope. Hallelujah. I'm going to open up the altar this evening. If God has spoken to you and you need prayer for anything, I want you to come forward this evening.